All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 246 of The Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host joining me, Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all. All right, uh, guest and star of the hour. He's the new director of the Precision Rifle Series. That is Shannon K. What's going on, Shannon? Hey, guys. Anthony, Jen, uh, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. Let's, uh, let's talk some shooting since uh, there's not a whole lot of matches going on. Yeah, let's talk some shooting here. Uh, Obviously, we know this game has kind of grown. Probably one. I mean, it was funny because people always say that, oh, now we're doing only PRS shows. Um, but before, when three gun was really hot and booming, we were doing we were just doing up with three gun shows. So it seems like we just go with what's booming, right? That just kind of makes sense, right? And uh, the PRS long range kind of scene is kind of growing in, in popularity, you know, very very quick over the last what two years or so. It seems. So. Yeah, I mean, really, it's probably um, been started before that. You see a lot of the, the, the outlaw sports, you know, whether it's a pistol, the multi gun, the three gun, um, the pick up and, and peak and, and, and taper off. So it's something that, you know, all the leaders and master directors are keeping an eye on, too. Um, you know, the industry, as the sponsors are, you know, if you talk to, you know, the ammunition manufacturers, gun manufacturers, Everything's kind of either flatlined or diving, but the long range game, bullets, ammunition, all the related components are, are up. So they're starting to focus on it. So, uh, you know, what we need to do is, is capture it, do it right, be a good steward and uh, and help promote it. Because that's obviously one of our pillars in the, in the mission statement to keep it going. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's growing tremendously. So it's growing and it's also mature that I'm sure we'll talk about that over the next hour as well some of the changes that we're doing we're, we're addressing not just the growth but the maturity of the sport and what what the expectations are having a lot of those three gun shooters having a lot of those pistol shooters come over they're used to a certain culture we need to maintain ours but also take some of the, some of the good points from them as well so yeah excellent now we're definitely going to dig deeper into that stuff going to get into uh show sponsors here the folks over at Tactical Shit, that's shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs. And they got everything over there, clothing, gun parts. Um, they kind of got it all. Take a look at shop.tacticalshit.com. We have a discount code coming from them later on in the show. Also, the folks over at GSL Technology Suppressors, okay, the world's finest suppressors. Check out gsltechnologies.com um, if you're in the market for any suppression or cans or anything you want to call them. Oh, I got a few. Jen's got one. And I think next season we should all have them out of jail to participate with. Uh, any uh, uh, questions that you want to ask throughout the live show, you can get those in over if you're watching on the YouTube side of things. Top right-hand corner, you can uh, join the conversation there, get them in there. Uh, the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, we got a post that probably just went up. If you prefer to use Facebook, you can plug in your question in the comment section of that post. All right, and lastly, the shootersmindset.com. Keep up with all the Shooters Mindset episodes, blogs, kind of reviews, articles, what shop, all over at the shootersmindset.com, all right? All right, uh, Shannon, let's get into it here. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with you, tell us a bit more about yourself, kind of how you got in the gun industry and how you became the PRS uh, director here. Ooh, well, yeah, we can probably go back. So I'm, I'm still obviously active duty um retired this year um and um you know gosh i guess it was 15 17 years ago or so you know i was a young young private and wanted to uh go to sniper school because that's what you know 9 11 hadn't happened yet or just right after 9 11 and we were waiting for a return and thought i was gonna miss an opportunity because i was getting promoted and working my way through the ranks and something happened and had the opportunity to went got top shot. I'm like, Hey, I think I'm, I'm pretty good. And the army trained me up. I'm just, I'm a top shot shooter. I'm top gun. Good. Or my first rifle match at the time, gosh, there wasn't but one or two a year, bad lands, you know, you know, just a few in Texas. And, and, um, and I'm like, I'm going to show these, I looked around these old guys looks just like the line now. And, um, got hammered down. I mean, it was my first match. I finished, you know, I don't know how many shooters were there, but I finished probably been packed somewhere. And I was like, wow, like I didn't, I didn't get trained up enough. And, um, I took that lesson and started training myself and, you know, got some minor equipment and the help of George Gardner from J precision. And then, uh, you know, within months, you know, I started winning some matches and 
and uh, you know, got caught up as a deployment. So I'd always shoot a couple of years, put it down, and and then started doing some training, just kind of, you know, by word of mouth, and um, you know, next thing you know, it just kept kept growing and growing and growing, and the training part of it took off, and I started building a few facilities, and PRS kicked up, you know, about six, seven years later, I helped with that with some ideas, obviously being, being an officer and being part of a, a lot of different diverse organizations. I think I brought probably a little bit of organizational leadership to it, um, you know, to manage, manage some things. And, and it's always been a big supporter of, uh, of the PRS Help the Club series and was kind of involved off and on since the PRS's inceptions at, at different times, start of the club series. And then obviously this opportunity kind of tied in retirement, made a little bit of sense. Um, it's a lot of work, but that's how I got into it. And now, you know, we got, um, only thing I miss is I don't get to peak, compete much. You know, I think from that entire time, I've shot less than 25 matches from when I started shooting in the early 2000s to now. Um, and I think my worst finish other than that first match was 11th. And, um, I need to get out training and get out and shoot. So that's what I miss, but I also enjoy being a match director. You know, you know, we host the uh, K&M, the, the two biggest matches of the year. We put a lot of effort in, into making that a production. Um, and then obviously taking that same kind of kind of balanced approach as a match director, as a, as a, as a top-level shooter. Um, and then the PRS director, um, bring that into the sport. Um, but uh, so that's kind of how I got involved. Long story short. Yeah, it's a pretty big uh, year coming up for – for you as the new director, right? So I'm sure there's plenty of changes. There's a lot, every time there's change, there's a lot of people who like to talk and go back and forth and put in their opinion and stuff like that. That's regarding all kind of organizational kind of structures, regardless of what sport it is. Um, so what is your goal uh, being the new PRS director and kind of where do you see the vision for the series? What's your vision going? Yeah, Anthony, so the first thing I did you know, after an intern for a while, uh, talked to a few people in and outside the industry. I'm like, okay, just a simple organization, one on one. Okay, what's our what, what is our vision statement, and then what is our mission statement? So, you know, look at the ones we have currently. The mission statement's not too far off, but it revises us. So, you know, a lot of a lot of younger guys, or a lot of guys just getting started into kind of leadership stuff is is it that they're not. I don't want to say grounded, but they're not figuring out a lot of businesses, a lot, a lot of things, organizations make mistakes in the sense that like, Hey, what do you, what are you doing? Um, you know, what is the PRS here to do? You know, we don't run matches other than the finale, you know, we're by the shooter's request and the match director's request, we'll establish rules. So it's very unique in, in what our responsibilities are, but I started off drafting that vision statement and what are we now? And really what a vision statement is, is like, you know, where do you want to be? They shoot, usually they're short and they're bold. Um, and, 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 and I just laid it out there. It is, and we'll continue to expand as a permanent precision rifle organization in the world. You know, there's, there's no doubt about that. And then, you know, the mission statement, okay, you know, yeah, you know, promote and grow the sport. And there's four pillars, you know, promotion, build the base, expand connections. You know, we want to obviously support the competitors, match directors in the, in the industry, and then achieve, you know, competitive success, competitive excellence. I mean, we are, we're competing. So we want to celebrate, you know, those that do well, not just the top, but those that do well at, at all different levels. Um, and that's it. So if it doesn't fall into those four pillars or fit the, the vision statement, like we, we will not get involved. And I think the PRS um, has struggled with that in the past a little bit. Like there's only so much we could do. There's things that we don't own. We don't own the matches. We don't own the shooters. Um, it, it's volunteer. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, our vision is to is to do those things now how we're going to go about it is is what the peers i think is probably been struggling with a little bit it takes some organization it takes some leadership we got to build those partner partnerships the sponsors are begging for it. the match directors you know need it want it um and the shooters want the information as well so that's why we started off right off the bat okay we got to do a better job present this information not just on social media but going on shows like the shooters mindset and then obviously a, a big thing for us coming in the next few weeks is going to be our website. Yeah, awesome. when you get the new website, I think you should get, I've said this, I said this last year about it, you should have an interactive map that'll show you where the places are because as somebody that still 
relatively new. If you want to know, if you want to talk to somebody new to PRS that had to struggle through and figure out what all this was about and where to go, just call me one day and I'll tell you some things because everybody's yeah. like, oh yeah, go to CORE, go to K&M. And I'm like, well, where are those? Oh, K&M's in Tennessee. Well, Tennessee's a pretty big state. Like <laughs> part of it I can drive to, part yeah. of it is not real reasonable. And trying, it took me probably an hour sitting down researching and trying to look up the different ranges and figure out where they are in relation to me and which ones I should look into their actual matches. It'd be so cool, like when you did the PowerPoint, you had a map uh, that kind of pinpointed. So that would be like really cool if it's on the website. You may have that in the works, but that'd be awesome to have on the website. So it's easy for somebody brand new to look and be like, well, that's sort of close to me. I could drive there. Yeah, so we... Um that, that is not just for the two day matches, but also for the regions and all the one day matches. We have that in the works, but that is a lot. And that's what's killing us. Travis, obviously is a big part of the, the PRS team has been around forever. Did a phenomenal job with, with companies and, and, and subs that are putting it together. I'm not fully going to pretend I, I know everything. I know what I want and I know a baseline of, of coding, but there's a lot of custom things that we're doing. We basically started from scratch. Um, I should, I've had a few pictures out there that I sent to, to you guys out there, but those are all in the works. It should be super simple, super, super flashy, super, Hey, here's information and a sole source for all the matches that you want to, you want to hit up. So it's coming. I won't make any promises. I, I know I'm a firm believer that, you know, I, I see the landscape now and the landscape is a PRS needs to get some results. So I'm hoping I'm not going to promise that by January 15th that we're up. Um, Cause that was our goal. Um, we'll see how it goes. We also want to launch our memberships um, at the same time. If we have to, we'll, we'll launch on the old website. It still functions, but I was like going to ask you that is when people yeah. should anticipate to do that. I'm glad you didn't do yeah. it in December. I'm broke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm holding it. Yeah, the holidays is never good. Um, you know, I do anticipate in the future years that there there be kind of a rolling membership and rolling match submission for the two day matches. So it's not this big surge of work towards the end of the year. It's just, you know, we want to find efficiencies in the organization, but the the new shooter profiles on that too, we want guys to update that because we actually have a in real time update of, you know, what's ever we're using. Well, I'm using bar by barrel or APA break, and that'll publish on the page as the shooter profiles get updated. So um, I'm sure we're, there'll be a few little kinks we'll work through, but in, in the long run, uh, you know, it took me two months to build the club series portion of the website with Travis and those guys, you know, we're, we've been on this one for a little less than a month or so. So um, I think we can do it, but it's going to be worth the wait. It definitely will. It'll be a lot more professional. It'll match what we're trying to do with the PRS. and It'll be a huge benefit to the shooters and the match directors. Well, there we go. We had a couple live ones here and then we got it. We got your question, John. Uh, Precision Rifle Network says hello to all. Hey. Um, also, Rich Foster, which you guys could just kind of hit on, uh, is when does uh, 2019 membership start? So obviously you're waiting for the launch of the website, which can be in the middle of this month or maybe a little bit later, depending on how it goes. Is that correct? Yeah, so I'm pretty certain. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very comfortable announcing right now that we're, we'll launch the membership January 15th, whether our new website's up or not. So uh, guys could plan on January 15th. Um, I signed up for their memberships, their, the regional service memberships, and, the, and then the, uh, the pro series memberships. And then obviously Joel from Precision Rifle Network, he's, he's one of our partners for some media stuff too. That's why he's chiming in. He's going to be filming a few matches and doing some, uh, some medium stuff. So we're, we're excited to partner with, uh, with him and, and Precision Rifle Network for, for, uh, for the future. It's going to be good for both, both of us. Awesome. Jen, what do you got? Uh, well, first, a quick question that's live. Uh, Greg Cannon wants to know, is that your reloading room because it's so clean? He's jealous. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, it is my reloading room, but it's not fully functional yet. I, you could thank Jared White for uh, building me one of the nicest reload rooms probably ever. However, the uh, the shells are bare. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to compete this year, but I just have so busy. I don't live here. I got to retire. I'm still stationed in Georgia, but yes, it is my reload room. If you guys want to, if I can turn it up right here, you can see I'm, I'm He's totally there. jealous. So, yeah, that's yeah. an awesome reloading room. Yeah. So, 
So you seem to really want to grow the PRS and keep it fresh and new and get new people into it. So you've discussed some changes. I know you put out the um, video that I think most of us watched um, and you had made some changes and then you actually listened to what people were concerned about and actually reverted one of the changes back after concerns were expressed. So can you clarify the intent of the qualifier matches and how that's going to go? Sure. Yeah. And it's going to be long. So, you know, there's, there's your base, uh, then there's your, your most vocal and your top, you know, what I call the top 100 shooters, um, which really is probably less than 5% of the get the, the people that are shooting for scissor rifle matches out there. Um, and not only in the pro series, but also on the, the, what was the club series, the sport has grown so much and matured so much. And there's so many opportunities for guys to get high scores. Um, that's good. We want that. We want that growth. More opportunities. Guys in the southeast five years ago, yeah, we got to drive 10, 12 hours for match. Right now, six, seven, eight hours, absolutely not. They're they're not going to, and they don't they don't have to. Other parts of the country, there that's still, you know, still fits their appetite because they don't have a choice. Whether it's you know uh, population base or, or ge just geography based. Um, so we needed to address bullet number four or, 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 or goal number four in our mission statement, which is, you know, achieve that competitive, you know, excellence that we wanted there. Um, and a lot of different scoring ideas were addressed. You know, the PRS tried, you know, placement base, which I've always kind of been an opponent from um, because it, um, it starts to scale the, how we reward performance in negative ways pass about 10, 15 places. That would have been a negative on the sport in the sense that we're racing to tell 85% of any match. Like, hey, you did well in your points, but because of where you placed, um, you only got 10 points when if you placed, you know, five, six, 10 places higher, you would have got, you know, an additional 40. So we did a bunch of math. We did a bunch of statistics on every single every single match. So that, that was paying. Um, we tried to average, we tried, we tried looking at and discussed, you know, there's a, a focus group that we have. There's about 50, 60 shooters. Uh, not all of them are top. Some of them got our, our season minds that have been around since before, you know, most people knew what the PRS was or precision rifle shooting was. Um, and I put restrictions on what we could and could not do. Um, because I, it could not, it could not hurt the base. So when you're in the form with 50 or 60 guys, you're going to get what 50, 60 guys want. Um, and, and unfortunately, some of those guys, you know, were just geared towards, hey, just, um, we're, which is understandable, completely understandable. Um, so the compromise, well, and I also didn't want to come in and make a bunch of big changes. You know, there's always that new guy coming in. Um, and if, if any kind of military experience could 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 guide me on this one, it was like, hey, you know, we, we come in at a position every two years, and there's always a new young motivated guy coming in behind you. So I wanted to be very cautious of that. Like, what, what do we need to do? And it couldn't harm the sport or growth, but it also um, had the risk had to be worth the reward. And really, I, I didn't want any risk. And, and that's where I settle on qualifiers. Because at the end of the day, if there's a couple matches um, or if there's some matches attended by less than a, a certain percentage of, of the top shooters or high high place shooters um how to how do we address that well it's not scoring um sco there's you know there's no perfect scoring system but we have a pretty good way of awarding performance replacement base that's acceptable um so we did that was like hey the best thing and the easiest thing we have to do is have you guys shoot together so we looked at how many matches people are shooting um you know, is it going to change match dynamics? Is it going to hurt? Is it going to help? And qualifiers ended up being the way to go. So as one of your three scores, you have to have a qualifier in there if you want to go to the finale. If you just want to keep, compete for season points, you'll you'll be good to go. Just don't change your match habits. If, if you want to go to the finale, you want to get qualified, you have to keep, you have to count one of your, you will count one of your qualifier scores. The system will make you, um, even if it's not one of your top three. If you want to go improve your qualifier score, just like your other two matches, then you could go, I was saying, and improve that and shoot another qualifier. It'll take the highest score, just like those other two. Um, what we were going to tie to that, as I looked at this, the organization, 
you know, um, and looked at the leadership, looked at, the, you know, the past couple of years and evaluated it and figured out why is there so many leaders um, transition in and out of the PRS. One of the job is, you know, there's, you know, a lot of emotion. Some of that can be good. A lot of it can be bad. There's, you know, the, there's Facebook, which uh, it is what it is. Um, a, lot, a lot of good there, but also could do some bad. But the, the purist doesn't take place a lot. I mean, we, we go out in the match. We'll have four people at KM and there's not a stick of drama, you know. But all of a sudden, you get online, and there's it can get a little emotional. So we're just not gonna not gonna address that, not gonna deal with that. If that means we gotta we gotta to uh, you know grow by have a little addition by subtraction, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and so we implemented those in the rules as well. Um, but looking at those qualifiers, we also um, we're looking at those organizational structures, some of those stresses I was just talking about that the purest leadership has had in years past. And the sport has grown, yet the membership has been stagnant um, or decreased the past two or two years or so. Um, but the matches have increased. There's 100 clubs. There's a new website. There's there's organizational effort. There's there's a staff, and some of most of them are part time. You know, we had to let some really good people have been part of the PRS for a long time. We had to let them go because the organizational was just not not it just wasn't viable. Um, so we got to make that viable. And looking at that, we're like, okay, we wanted to tie those qualifiers. One, to reduce the maybe perceived um, demand for those matches to PRS memberships because that also helps us grow our base, funds the organization to do the things that the organization needs to do. Um, <clears throat> half the country was 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 probably okay, was, was good with that. The other half wouldn't. And, um, you know, so I listened to the match directors you know, came up pretty strong. Like, hey, guys, if, if we're going to do this, we're going to get it right. You know, it might be a good time to do it this year where there's, where there's some transition. Um, so, um, but that was a lot that there's dynamics, you know, the past year and a half or so that they created some just some unfortunate dynamics. And, you know, I took the opportunity to have this back away from this. Let's repair some of these relationships and um, let me produce some results organizationally, at least. And then, and then we can look at that. So in lieu of that, still doesn't solve our problem to, to fund the organization. Um, but what we wanted to do is we um, started that rewards program with our sponsors, um, you know, partner with Nylon Apparel to, to help us with some t-shirts and some logistics there. Um, you know, if you look at a t-shirt, a koozie and a sticker, okay, you probably can get those for, for under 20 bucks, but then you start shipping them, packaging them, paying somebody, individual ship them out individually like you know that's been tried in the past and hasn't hasn't worked well then next year you know you're left with half of that membership due to fund the organization so um we did some smart things there and learned from some of our lessons from the past so that's how we'll, we'll address building the base and we'll look at it this year and we'll, we'll pick it up but you know my kids swim and they can't go to swim meet or a swim practice without being a member of usa swimming you know, if you're motocross, if you're a race car, or bull riding, whatever organization, they usually have paid memberships as a requirement. The PRS doesn't. That is a an organizational flaw. So when people say like, "Hey, why, why is the leadership always changing over?" Because the organization has it has a fundamental flaw in its structure. People could go to the matches. Match directors don't don't pay anything to the PRS. The workload has increased, yet the the funds have been you know, basically flatline. Um, and now that, that, you know, the prior owner funded it privately on his own, that that, that obviously is not happening anymore. Um, that's very generous to him. But so those are some of the, the challenges that we're dealing with. Um, the good thing is there's a lot of good people. The sponsorship support has been absolutely awesome. There's so many sponsors that want to use the PRS um, as a vehicle to get to the shooters. So we use that, which is some recommendations I had last year. Hey, build the base, pay membership accounts or rewards. Hey, go to the sponsors. And we hit them very hard this year and the response has been great. So we have a lot of a lot of thank yous and a lot of work to do to, to give them what we promised. And then we'll, we'll see them all at SHOT Show. Um, so that's kind of a snapshot of, of what I'm looking at in the PRS and kind of why we went back on some of those. We wanted to get it right. We want to take too many risks for some of those match directors. Um, there we go. We got a couple live pour in here. Jen, what do you got? You can hit yours, and then I have a couple in mind. 
Sam Fuller wants to know if there's going to be a senior division when you turn 55. Yeah, so the senior division is, um, I don't have the rules in front of me, but we updated it. And it, I think we did go to 55. You're, you're kind of standard across the board. Um, so I think it was 50 for a while. We took that to a, to a vote in that shooters focus group and, and we updated that. So that's in the rule book. That's on the Peters website. Well, all right. We got here one from, man, I can't even, uh, Lucky Duck. I'm going I'm to I'm say that one. It says, uh, any equipment re, uh, restrictions for tack and production in 2019, i.e. bags, tripods, et cetera? So no change to the PRS rules in, in tactical. Um, the production was incredibly hard to deal with. And believe it or not, the, the, in, the emails that we've gotten more than anything related to production, and it's also our smallest division. Um, so I used, uh, I got with Buck Colley from CNH and a couple other guys in my head helped me rewrite some of these rules and really focus on production. Let's get it right. Let's, let's leave it broad enough that we can't keep up with every manufacturer. I mean, in, in two weeks, all oh, there's a bunch of stuff that I know is going to come out. That's not even public yet. Um, that we just can't keep the rule days rule book up for the shooters and the mass directors in time. So we did it very simple. We gave them those left and right limits as far as pricing. And if it meets that, then they'll, they'll be qualified. So we just, we simplified it, but there's no major, equipment reduction. So if he's referencing tripods or additional bags, that is completely up to the match directors. The PRS is not going to dictate what what equipment, uh, support equipment that the shooters could, could shoot at, at individual matches. There we go. Uh, one here from Rich Foster. He says, will there be a standardized price base for regional matches? Uh, I don't know what regions he's in, but again, um, I, I, I see it for the shooters that don't know that the, the PRS is like the NCAA just because it's bull season, right? So the, 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 the schools, the colleges kind of shape and, 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 and work with the NCAA to, to govern themselves. That's what we do with our, our match director committee, which is behind cl closed doors and in, in, in our shooters focus groups that I go out and I reach out. Of course, I'll, I'll reach out. Guys, you got my email address. You can email me anytime and you're, you're going to get a response. And, and I use those those avenues to shape me. Um, the But going back to the NCAA, the colleges, every college sets their own price structure. They have their own, um, you know, expenses, their own costs, different regions. You know, I've seen regional matches as cheap as 30 and I've seen them as, as, as high as 110. That is where the free market is going to decide. The PRS doesn't take any money from that. Um, we are purely a member-based organization, so the matches that the shooters shoot, that is a transaction between them and the, and the match directors. Well, there you go. Jen, you got any questions there? Yeah, I have somebody that wants to know about the club series matches. And how, like if they wanted to start one up, how can they start it up? What does PRS do to help them or to support that? How much, what's the cost involved? So yeah, right now there's no cost associated with start local club. You could go to the PRS website, even though we're right now and click on, go to the, go to the club series, click on submit a club. We'll see that trigger. And then guess what? That gives you a club and you can start doing matches. You can put them on the counter. That's just, the administrative website stuff. Jason or myself, typically Jason Redding, who's the assistant director, which people are going to get to know his name pretty quick. He can help us out quite a bit with the PRS. He he's obviously works at KM as well. But um, he, um, as far as help, what we usually do is, is we'll have those conversations with you. But what we'll do is every region has a, a regional director that volunteers, usually their match directors are typically, not always, but they're involved. Um, both in the pro series as a shooter, in the industry as a as a as a as a, um, a, a small business or, or, or larger business, um, and we put those guys into contact with them. Um, so we will absolutely support you whatever we can. As far as physical coming out to to do that, no, we're going to need a little bit more initiative from that. that someone that wants to run a club or a regional match as we as we kind of rebranded it this year. Um, but we'll help you. We'll support you, and and obviously I have an open invite to my place if it if it's feasible for somebody. Hey, come come see how we do it, um, and I know other people will help you too. 
Um, but it'll, it'll be a hard press since most people are doing this on their off time as a hobby to get someone to come, come support you hands on. We're just not that big of an organization, but we will die trying and, and find someone to, 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 to get you as far as we can. Do y'all have uh, steel sponsors of the PRS that maybe give discounts to a club that's trying to get started and needs that equipment and that yeah, steel? Yeah, we, we do. Yeah, we do, Jen. So those guys got to get with me. There, there's a bunch. I know Big Dog Steel, um, and I know there's there's a few others. I know JC Steel as well, and I believe Julie is. We're working. We're updating our friends of of the rewards too. They might have 15% off. I think some of them have even higher 20, 30, maybe 35% off to match strikers. And then obviously if you're buying a bunch of steel, um, you know, that, that probably, you probably want to call them up because they'll work with you. Cause now you have a relationship with that steel manufacturer. He knows you're going to come back. Um, right. So I would, I would definitely look and talk to those guys. It's really about establishing just like for the PRS, a large level, establish that relationship. What steel do you like? You know what, what 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 guy does the most you know whatever your decision making is and then call that guy up say i'm starting a club and and, uh, and they will all work with you that's what i did when i got started with, with big dog he's been a big big supporter and we're indebted to him you know when we oh, got kicked off what's your contact information shannon just i mean obviously people in the prs are probably going to know yeah that. so um my contact information is shannon at precisionrockleseries.com jason is jason at and then Julie, if it's any kind of sponsor related stuff is Julie at Precision Rifle Series. Um, That'll all be on the website work. once you get it up, right? Yeah, once it gets going, yeah. And, I, and I've been putting them on all the products that were shared out there. It's on the Facebook pages. Um, so if, if you want it, it's out there. Yes, we're working on the website. So, um, But I, I do believe it's on the footer of the website as well right now. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, what's the – how are PRS and NRL matches – uh, how are the series kind of different? Um, I mean, a precision rifle match is a precision rifle match at the end of the day. I mean, you could, I could sit here and, and do some political speak and be like, oh, this is, you know, different this way. Guys, I mean, they're, they're, a precision rifle is a precision rifle match. Whether it's a one-day match, a two-day match, um, you know, are there different matches? Sure. Just like there's different uh, gyms to go work out and some are nicer than others. You know what I'm saying? Some cores are nicer than others. Um, that is, you know, at, at the end of the day. I mean, some people, if you look at the grind, that's a unique match. I mean, it's a rifle match, but it's a production. There's there's food, there's shenanigans, there's fun, there's camaraderie. There, there's a bunch of different things. That's what I like to promote as a match director. The K&M match in the fall, in the spring, we try to a little bit more competitive. Um, and then there's some matches that are, you know, you just, you can't, in, like, for us other guys can't compete with we got some matches in montana this year that i look at the train it's so gorgeous shooting in their gorgeous it's like you can't get that in the southeast so um you know i think the biggest the biggest difference is is um the size and scale you know um you know the NRL does some good things those guys are organized they, they got their little video arm but you know it, it translates into you know, 250 shooters that are paid members compared to what the purist has, which is, is significantly more. So, um, you know, as far as the matches, guys, get out and go shoot some matches. You know, you want to get hung up on that? Go ahead. Is is there a big difference, man? There's Ford and Chevy. What are you going to do? Um, the the difference here is it, it's not really it, – I, I guess the biggest difference in one sense is one's a regional series and one's a, a national series. Um, and then obviously our clubs, we got close to 100 regional clubs or match directors that put on events that that is unrivaled um there's 385 matches last year from the pierce alone so the volume the in the nrl did you know five less than five percent of that so um it just depends it just depends what you're looking for and what you want but at the end of the day a match is a match um and there's a lot that are unaffiliated uh you know there, and there's some that are unique some kind of mix that whole kind of iron man military flair in it and those are starting to get a little bit popular um and that, that aren't part of the pr as well so you know just because we're not because there's you know copycat or competing organizations out there it doesn't mean we're not trying to grow the sport so i won't say anything bad about them but i will tell the truth it is what it is if, if, you know, if there's an nrl match close to somebody man go shoot it go, go get out and shoot the match you know if you want to be part of the series you want to compete um you know be part of the prs we'll, we'll compete for you we, we want we want you to be part of the team so well said. I like it. So, 
as talking about all the different matches, so I've shot three of your matches now, and they were some of the best run matches that I've participated in. I didn't always shoot the best, but that wasn't your fault. No. Um, <laughs> but it's easier to blame on the match director, right? <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> can I just blame you? I just I shot yeah, that. It was yeah, your fault, fine. right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> My barrel went out. It was your fault. I mean, no. Um, so how do y'all do that? How do you balance keeping the match fun, but also keeping the legitimacy of the match? Like you don't want to make it so easy where everybody hits everything. Um, you want it still to be a legit competition, but you still want it to be fun for those of us like me who are, you know, this was last year was my first year in PRS. And so you want to keep it kind of good for both while maintaining a, a difficulty level that keeps it challenging for everybody. So how do you do that? So, I am probably more analytic than, and I don't always get it right. And I've learned more from, you know, mistakes than I have, you know, getting it right. Um, is I focus my course of fire on my average shooter. Um, at any, so I'm a big analytics guy. So at any given time, you know, a, a PRS match could expect 10 to 20% of the top 100 to 200 shooters at their match. Well, okay. What about the other 90 to 80%? That that matters. So I start off initially, and because I train, we train so many people, so we see the very newest and we see the most, the best in the world. So, um, and I'm focused on the middle. So I start off the course of fire with the guys in the middle. Um, and then I develop the course of fire. Then I look at each one of those stages and I break down those stages and whether it's by position, whether it's by time, whether it's by multiple position, or target size, I will start to create what I call call separation um, in some of those stages. So a lot of shooters could probably shoot the majority of, of a stage um, pretty well, five, six, seven, but then those last three shots, whether they're getting further, they're running out of time, the position's harder, or the target's smaller, or a combination of those above, that, that's how I mix it up. I, I fully expected my main match, the, the winner to be team 85 and 90% and Regina came in and, and just crushed it. Uh, the match director can't do anything about that. So she just, she just tore it on her and actually Brian Allen did as well. Uh, we you, did, didn't you didn't, ex so. you didn't expect wonder woman to come. You, I mean, yeah. She, I mean, she, I mean, there's those times and, and you know, and the, and the shooters know, like sometimes you just, you know, you just do really, you just have that day and you're on fire where the rest of the field was exactly, and then we're talking top guys, like top five nationally every, every year. Um, they finished where they were. So that, and then, so that's great. So I got that part right. And it was a challenge for those guys. Um, and then, but really the first thing I do is I go to that 50% mark. So if there's 300 shooters, I look at, you know, 150 and like how many points did you get? And if they're between 50 and 60% of the winner, I'm like, okay, that was a balanced course fire. Um, and, and I think that's one of the one, that, that is one of the many reasons why people come and they're, hey, it's going to be a fair match. I'm going to be challenged. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be a fair match. Um, and you do that, then everything else usually takes care of itself. Um, but that's one of the reasons. That's how I how I set it up for competitive success. And then obviously the base, which is 80% of the shooters there. So you can get it all. You can't do it all. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah, you can never please everybody. And that's the way I think a lot of the – you know, just being in the, I'm always going to make comparisons to the pistol kind of organization because it's from around, but that's where you see the base of your USPSA shooters and their classified shooters are CMB class shooters, right? So you look at those percentage of those guys who are in the middle of the pack, that's the bigger percentage who are shooting a match. You know what I mean? So it makes sense of what you're, you're thinking and you're on a, on a way you set it up. Right. So I mean, if I want to get the top guys and crush everybody, man, that's great. I'll have 20 dudes in my match every year. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's what it is. And, and all match directors have to think about that. But, uh, yeah. you know, I take this so much pride, too, is that, you know, anytime you came a couple, came, come to K&M, and there's a couple other matches in the country, too, it's a good snapshot of what the finale is going to look like, you know, at least, at least at least a snapshot. So with the qualifiers now, the good thing is we'll see that spread across throughout the country. So it's going to be an exciting year for the PRS in that regard. Uh, especially for those competitive shooters, whether you're trying to break into the top 200, 300, or 100, or 50, or top 10, you're going to see, you're going to get a picture of that, you know, every qualifier you go to. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be good for the sport. Got a live one here from uh, Jeep Driver. He says, I love shooting Sunday one-day PRS club matches, where there'd be a limit on how many given MD, like how many can you do given an MD in a season? 
Um, it depends. Um, it just depends, and that's something we got to work with your regional director on. So, I, I, I'd love to say, hey, um, you know, run as many matches as you want, and that's because it's good for the sport, simply speaking. Um, but we also have to maintain that competitive um, balance. If, if someone's going to run a match every weekend, and is just going to have twenty six guys, twenty five guys, a minimum. Um, and, and guys aren't, aren't traveling to other clubs, which is, you know, okay too, but that's why we also put the qualifiers in there. So depending on what the match is, depending on the details, that's something we'll work with the, the regional directors on. Um, uh, if guys can feel a, a competitive regional series match every week, then guess what? We're going to let you do it every week. Um, but at the same time, we got to, we, as far as, as PRS is concerned, we need to have a functional regional series. Um, and so what we won't want to do is, is, is be too weighted uh, one club or the other. So we look at numbers, we look at analytics, fairness to the other match directors and try to find that balance. But that's something I work with the regional directors and lead on them too, because no one knows our regions better than them. Um, there we go, Jen. You had one coming up or any live on your end? Uh, I don't have any live right now, but I – can go to the next question that we have, which is about the gap grind. We were talking kind of about your matches anyway and, and how you balance them, but how do you, and I think everybody kind of is like big eyed at the gap grind, especially, but even the um, K&M match last May had what, 325? No, we, I think we had close to 300 signed up. The weather was actually in a higher proportion. Of, so I think it was like 260 or something like that. So. But, but you had a lot there, and then the gap grind has, I think, 400 sign up, and I don't know if it came to actually 400 that shot it, but you managed to get people through those matches in, like, a day and a half. Like, we're done by noon or one on the second day and then doing the prize table and driving home, which is great for me because I live seven and a half hours from y'all, so I like to get on the road and, and get home yeah, to my so family, Jenny, so it's great. Here's the thing, like I, I love she's as much as the next guy, but by Sunday by noon, I am done. I want to go home. I'm tired. Let me shoot my stuff. So I really set stuff up as I want to do it. That's why I think the regional one day things has been so explosive because it's much more sustainable. Guys are, are tired um, and you know want to get on the road. And they get get home on Sunday, go to church. So there's always there's a lot of benefits for it, but. Uh, how do I do that? It's very stressful. And it starts the day k and match is over and k and match starts, has already started essentially as far as design. So every January I'll go through, I'll freshen up the facility, put new infrastructure and props, move it around different target trees. So there's always something different. There's there's always that k and feel to it. But if you, you've been to a couple of my matches, you're like, whoa, that's different. Whoa, that's different. So I always want to keep it, keep it fresh for the shooters. Um, but it's really by stage design. Like I break it down to keep in time. Um, the average shooter will finish a certain stage in this time versus the limit. You know, I talk to the ROs and, and coach them up and we have a, a phenomenal bunch that Jewel takes care of. Um, and we just run very, very efficiently. Um, but it's super stressful because if you ask me as a, as a shooter, like, hey, you're going to go to match and you're going to shoot in a 15 to 20 man squad. I'm going to go like, no way, dude. That match is going to take forever. Um, mm -hmm. And I've worked up to that number the past uh, couple of years because we have got super efficient. Obviously, the design of the facility and then how we how we set up the course fire and the flow. It just um, it works. And, and that's why the numbers are what they are, you know, or at least one reason for it. So we're we're very lucky, and very blessed that the shooters like. And, and respond to that well. So we're looking forward to another great, great year in 19th, both the, the Kales came in match and the grind. It's a well-balanced match. Cause like, there's not a lot of downtime waiting. I've been at some matches where one squad is slower. And so the squad behind them ends up waiting for them every time. You know what I mean? You get there and you're waiting. Mm -hmm. So you're watching half of their squad and then you got to go through all of your squad and then you still get to the next stage and you're watching half of their squad again. You're like, Oh my God, you know, and that doesn't seem to happen. I don't know. I guess the ROs really like keep you on. I know sometimes I'm like, wait, I don't have my dope yet. Let me just, I 
I'm just gonna look at my yeah. cholesterol for one minute, you know, but they really do push and keep it moving. They don't they don't they're not, they're not rude at all, but they do definitely keep it moving more than I have seen at other places, I guess. Yeah, we definitely don't want guys to feel rushed. I, I remember a finale a couple of years ago. Gosh, I mean, you roll up, put your backpack down, like, oh, shoot, you got one minute. And you're like, man, I don't even, get, I don't even know what stage I'm shooting, you know, what, what the course fire is. So, you know, we want to find that balance. But it's also, you know, I talk to the match directors, you know, the newer ones get in like, oh, how do you do it? How do you get that many people? Or, you know, why does core sell out versus my match? I'm like, guys, you put on a good match. You're going to get the shooters will come. Um you know, there's probably a, an abundance of matches. Um, we've already seen that a little bit, not so much with our series, but others. Um, and, the, and the matches aren't filling. And, and the first thing that the, the match directors want to say is, oh, there's too many matches. Well, the shooters aren't saying that. You know, if the shoot, if the match is filled, then, then you know, we're okay sanctioning. We, we actually did take a little less this year um, to, to, because there is a flood of matches. But that doesn't mean the match directors can't go – can't don't have to go out there and compete. I'm competing against all the other matches around me for the same pool of shooters, a, a large pool of shooters. Um, and that that experience, that value has got to be there. Um, and we put a bunch into it, a bunch, whether it's the food, the ROs, the, the it's just like I said, it's a production. But um, you know, it, it it also ties back into um, you know something else you're bringing up as far as you know those other things is as far as some matches this, sometimes you just can't help it, you know, target failure or something, you know, something we were shooting at these things. So sometimes things go down. So some match directors, you know, will find themselves in a little bit of trouble, but a lot of it can be mitigated too with stage design. Every th third or fourth stage, if you look, if you think back to it, you'll be like, hey, this stage we got done a little earlier or, you know, or no one really timed out on that stage, whether it's a pure skill stage or, something that like a mover system where people don't really, you know, mover stays where people don't time out because they shoot too fast or whatever. Um, and they're what I call buffer stages where if something goes down, I might have a squad waiting, but as soon as, because they got done one stage early, but that next stage, they're going to get back and, and desynced. Because when you have 20 stages going on at one time, you can't have a stage that's going to kill you because it will desync the whole match. Um, and, and they tend, they will a little bit towards the end of the day, and that's usually when we call it around 4, 3.30, 4 o'clock. And then the next day, you're able to get synced back up again. And that's why we were able to finish it. One of the reasons why we finished at noon, 1 o'clock for these large matches. Yeah. That's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, obviously, the look... I mean, you got it set up, but you got a good routine. You got a flow. You got a facility. I mean, you always kind of run into that. I think my last major match, we that was the case. I mean, sometimes I've seen it so bad where it happened local. I just, I just skate out of there, man. I'm like, dude, I, I you know, I'm not, I don't have time to, you know, you get on a stage and then an hour and a half later, you finally get a chance to shoot. It's like, oh, dude, I, you're standing around for that. Sometimes it's beneficial because you can see the stage, you can get really prepped up and then you're just sitting there for like an hour. But sometimes it's unavoidable based on the facility and shit happens. Props break, especially, you know, and then it's a pain in the ass to get them back up. You can't. And you don't. And you want everybody to shoot the same stage, so it's got to run at the same speed. If it's a mover, all all that shit comes in a in a play. Yeah, and I think you know, Anthony. I think the shooters are starting to, to they share your sentiment, man. And, and that's why a good rule of thumb is from a the from a stage brief to the last shooter finishing, collecting brass, getting scores, forty five minutes max is is what shooter. That that's where some shooters you'll get a little bit. Eh, it's a little slow, but on the flip side, you get ah, oh, it's a little fast for me. So if you're getting both complaints at the same time, then you know you got it right. Yeah. Um, and what I found is about every anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes is a good turn per stage. So keep the shooters engaged, gives them enough time to prep, socialize a little bit, um, and um, that's kind of the rule of thumb that I use. Yeah. Uh, Gab grind is a great, great way to get new shooters involved in PRS. We know this. Obviously, there's a lot of hype around that match and build up. A lot of people want to shoot it. Uh, what are some other ways do you think you can grow the sport and get new shooters involved? Um, I think the biggest thing, and, and, and I'm probably in the minority talking to a, a lot of the guys that have been around forever, is we're, the, the sport's maturing so much. And, and I talked about it, and I, and I fished it out there this year. Is we, we, we need to have some sort of classification system, you know, without changing what we're doing. Um, so guys have something to shoot for. You know, if you're a PRS member 835, 
and 150, 100, 150 are going to the finale. What, what, what's the point of, of being, what do you have to shoot for? You know, what's the point of being a PRS member? Um, Cause you can still go shoot the matches. So, you know, to, to give those shooters, whether it's a, you know, and there's a bunch of different ideas out there that, that we're going to look at. I'm going to socialize this year um, to look at 2020 is we got to have something for these guys to, to feel like they belong and like, Hey, I'm in, you know, whatever category, Hey, I'm in 35th place. I'm away from class and up. Um, now they have a home, they have a place, um, you know, and, and that's the size that we're getting to. So I'm going to be looking at the numbers really hard. So I think being more welcoming, um, you know, a lot of our stuff, so that's one. And the other one is really, um, is kind of addressing the culture of, you know, how people communicate online. It, it's really, it's kind of sad because on an individual basis, <laughs> You know, you'll find <laughs> good luck. Best people. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just I, I, I'm not going to fix it, but it doesn't. It's right. a two way transaction. If, if if you know, and there's, there's no First Amendment right here, guys. If you want to be a part of it, then just treat people with respect. If you don't agree with it, then go do something else. No one's forcing you to do it, you know. But if if you're going to trash a sponsor online that's trying to, you know, give or another shooter or a mass director that's trying to do the right thing, uh, man, like call them up, send them an email, do it like you would treat people how you want to be treated and you're okay. If you have a hard time with that, then maybe the PRS isn't, isn't for you. Um, you know, we want everybody, we want to be welcoming to everybody, but if you look at it, there's tens of thousands of people shooting, but it's always the same people online that uh so why so let's ask a question where are other people posting online because we know there's a bunch more shooting and it's because they don't like that that culture on, online so i won't be able to fix it but i could definitely mitigate it and, and honestly the, the staff at the prs um you know a lot of different leaders in the past have tried different things we're just gonna avoid it and so, so and, and basically marginalize it and then if we have to like hey man like Please don't do that. Like you want to do something on your own page or someone else's page, take it over there. But you know, don't try to harm somebody who's just trying to do something good for the sport. So like, you're, no so you're saying if it's consistently done by an individual, they're like no longer welcome in PRS. Is that what I'm kind of getting? Well, I don't want to say they're no longer welcome. I just want to change your behavior. We want to welcome everybody. But if you know, if if you do something that's inciting, you know, I, I don't know. I don't understand the culture of of people typing freely online that they wouldn't say to someone else's face, but I'm, I'm not going to fix that. There's so many things online that sharing information, sharing good ideas that outreach the communication Like we have to capture that. We need to use that, 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 that vehicle, if you will, to, to share information. But if it's always, if a lot of members that have emailed me and talked to me that, like, Hey, I love this. I, I get more requests on safety rules and safety issues and behavior online and how they don't want to be a part of it because what they see online. And then I look at all the matches across the country and there's none of that at the matches really, um, or there's a significant less degree of it. There, there's a disconnect there. So, um, you know, th those are the biggest, you know, things to grow is there's gotta be a welcoming atmosphere. Yeah. If you're a top shooter, you got responsibilities, whether you like it or not. If you're a match director, if you're an industry guy, if you're wearing a jersey, and you got sponsors, you're representing yourself. Most most importantly, you're representing a lot of other people. If you're on a PRS, you know, Facebook page or so Instagram, whatever, um, you, you're representing through a degree, you know, the PRS in our member base. And if you're going to be disruptive or it goes against our mission statement, we're just going to have a conversation with you. And that's usually what I do is like, hey, guys, um, if you might give me a call, man. I just I just deleted that. Hey, man, please give me a call. I just want to give you my perspective. And, you know, so uh, some people won't like that. Um, we have we've honestly had to do it very, very little already. So, um, you know, I think the word maybe a little get out, maybe not. You know, will it work? I don't know. We'll see. But we'll just remove ourselves if it doesn't. You know, we'll just. Yeah, it, it, and it also kind of like. You know, and Jen, you've seen these groups and three gun and all that type of stuff where there'll be a kind of a new guy that gets let into these Facebook groups and they'll just ask like a basic ask, you know, a, a question because they're new. They want to know the information. It might be as simple as, hey, what holster manufacturer should I go with? And I, I won't even bother because that shit is just a shit show of 
my sponsored, take this, take this, take this. And you really end up with, you don't end up any knowledge. It's almost like you got 20 fucking guys saying that my shit's the best. And, you know, where do you really source, where do you kind of narrow that down? Like, who do you, where do you go? I don't even mind like that? that as much as whenever somebody is new. I'm telling you, when I started in this, I didn't ask any questions online. Oh, no, I'm not stupid. I've been around the block, and I just didn't want to get eaten alive. And you ask a question in a group that is a dumb question because I don't know any better because I haven't shot long range ever. Only mm -hmm. shot my, you know, three gun. And so you ask a question, and you get eaten alive. And I see it all the time in the groups where people are like, you know, well, what kind of dumb question is that? And and it's not all the time, but there are people, there are groups that are like that that do that. That just gripes me. I'm like, really? You took the time to respond. If you thought it was stupid, just keep scrolling. I don't understand why you want to take the time to tear this poor person down who's trying to start. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, I don't see that too much. I mean, I, I, and I don't want to want you guys to think or the, the listeners to think that it's older. Oh, kind of, I, I can't be, Julie can't be, Jason can't be, and Travis can't be all over Facebook monitoring everything. And we don't, we, the regional pages are, are monitored by you know the reason i don't want to say monitor they're managed by their regional directors and and 99 percent you know 95 percent is good there, there's that five percent and when that small problems come up well, well we're just going to take a different approach and, and it's just going to be professional okay man let me call you up here's my number let's talk man to man this is why this isn't appropriate can you can you help us out here and if that doesn't get anywhere just by being reasonable then that probably tells us already what we want to we already know um, and, but that, it's such a small problem, but I do know the culture when you go to the matches, um, and, and, and I would say, I haven't been to all of them, but I've been to a lot, um, is exact opposite oftentimes what this 5% problem we're, we're seeing online. So, so why is that? If you're a new guy and you're in the squad, well, you know, guys help you out. Hey, here's your data. Hey, do it this way. No, don't do that here. Borrow my gear. Uh, why, why that doesn't happen? you know, online all the time, you know, I, I don't know, but it's just not going to, we're just not, it doesn't belong. Well, a lot to of the, anymore. a lot of the online stuff is not people that go to matches. I think that's right. a big no, difference. No no a doubt. lot of yeah. the people that are online that are commandos trying to, you know, eat people alive, don't ever go to a match. Then you go to a match and, you know, I shoot with like Regina Milkovich, Tim Milkovich, um, Wes Rowland, Philip Vallejo, who all have just like helped here. You need something here. I mean, they're the most giving people and that's only a small, small piece. There's so many people, Jacqueline, Brian, there's so many people that are like great ambassadors of the sport and PRS is like some of the most welcoming ever. I think my biggest problem with trying to get new people in the sport is the price of the gun and the ammo and everything. Like I want everybody to shoot PRS cause I love it. Um, and I want everybody to do it. It's like a drug addiction. I want everybody into it. <laughs> but like with three gun, I could be like, Hey, come shoot a match. You can share my rifle and shotgun with me. You know, if you just have a pistol, just come and you can shoot my long guns. Well, it's a little different PRS where you're shooting barrels out and you know, ammo yeah. is a good bit more expensive yeah. and more specific. So it's so much harder to me. Um, to get because people are like well it's so expensive i'm like well yeah it is <laughs> and i don't know how to um bridge that and get people to be able to have the access to be able to try it and really get out there and do it yeah and obviously the peers can't can't control that but we could take steps and right. play like production it's small uh the production shooters are, are frustrated because a lot of time the match directors uh might not recognize them as much as as we should uh, i'm probably guilty of that too um, you know, some guys, well, if I get 10 production shooters and I'll, and I'll get them a trophy or whatever, I'm like, Hey guys, you don't do a trophy, just recognize them. Um, you know, some from the prize table or whatever. Um, but that's why I haven't done it because we don't want it. I haven't got reproduction. Um, and I, I don't think we will only be only be, and there's a bunch of opinions on it only because it does. Hey, I'm going to go get a, a 15,000, a $1,500 rifle off the shelf. I'm, I'm going to go buy some, some factory ammo. I want to get out there and, and compete. Now, most of those guys, it's still going to be expensive. I mean, the, the match fees is your cheapest expense at the end of the day. You know, <laughs> uh, it's your ammo, it's a training, it's, it's a glass of soft, there's all these things. But we do want to make it all encouraging. But at the end of the day, um, it's an expensive sport. You, you, you probably have to have discretionary income um, at, at some level to do it. Um, but I will tell you this, 
I started off as an E5 in the Army with her Remington PSS, and and that got me going. And I think I probably had a Leopold 4 to 14 or whatever with the milled out right up on it, you know, second focal plane. Yes, yes, I'm dating myself a little bit, but, and it was a 308, and, and that's what I did. And all I was a 100 yard wrench. So if you want to do it, you could do it. Um, and you could get into it. Does, does that mean you're going to, you know, if you shoot once, Every quarter, are you going to be highly competitive at the top level? No. Some of these guys are shooting every day. Some of these guys shoot a couple times a week. I mean, that's what it's going to take at this point where the sport's at, um, you know, to compete at the highest level. But uh, the one guy's going to win it. One guy's going to get last. Everyone else is going to be in between. But at the end of the day, it's a rifle match, and a lot of guys are going to have a lot of fun doing it. Um, and no one cares where you finished everyone's like oh i finished here it's so embarrassing well you know what everyone else is doing looking at that result sheet they're looking at their placement too they're not looking at other people so um you guys just got to get out and do it if, if they can't afford it come out beg borrow gear because i know like those same people that will help out usually guys got some extra stuff and that's the cool thing about the sport that we want to capture because it does promote it help it grow i will say like when i wanted to learn this last year I didn't have anything to start with and I didn't know what I needed and I didn't have any club series matches that are super close to me and so all I knew to do was jump into two day matches if I'm gonna drive seven hours I'm gonna shoot two days by God <laughs> if I got to get a hotel room I'm gonna do a big match so I just really jumped in and did the big matches so just to anybody out there that might want to do it and they're like oh I'm not ready for this look I went in there and I didn't know anything and I, I jumped in and did these matches and everybody helped everybody loaned me gear helped me out here's a tripod here's this bag here's that bag like you don't have to have everything you got to have a gun but and some ammo but other than that people really do help in this sport and just kind of open their arms and taught me kind of at the matches really yeah, I got a couple here stacking up here. One from Joseph. He says, what is being done about the stacked team for the grind? The um, All right, so we've had some so – George and I got a little scar tissue with that um, and, and thought we had addressed it from two years ago this year. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't. Um, if you go on the website right now, the k website, you'll see um, that those rules are even more clear – and even more simpler to, to understand. So if, if guys fall out of that guideline um, and we're going to check the Monday before the grind, um, all the, the, the PRS results, the problem is is um, if they shoot other matches that are not PRS matches and they still do well, it's, it's going to be hard for us to track. So within the spirit of the match, the, the pros need to understand, like, hey, guys, don't do this because you're going to get busted out and George and I are going to find you. Um, but we will do – we're going to scrub it a week prior, which means some guys are going to get a phone call a week prior and be like, hey, I understand you, you. You probably signed up for the match in June and planned it for a year or two out because that's what some guys do. Um, but if you train so hard, which is understandable, and I get it, guys get into the sport just like you did, Jan, and they just start doing really well. Next thing you know, they're like, wow, I'm actually, you know, shot three, four, five, six matches. And I'm not really an, an amateur to the to the letter of the law anymore. Well, we're going to have to class you up. And we'll work with shooters on that as far as, you know, you can shoot as pr two pros if you want to shoot together, which we have all the time, father, son teams, whatever, husband, wife team. Um, but th those are going to – and we did a, a good job this year. It wasn't as clean as we liked, but we went back retroactively and adjusted those standings, adjusted the trophies to a few guys that we missed because we want, we do not want uh, – uh, whether it was unintentional, which I think for a lot of people it was because they signed up so fast because the registration just happened so fast, the website crashed, <laughs> and, they, and they missed those rules. Um, you know, guys – Pros, like you, you own some responsibility in making sure that your amateur did not shoot past that amateur qualification as it relates to the grind. So, um, you know, we fixed it last year. Like I said, not as smooth as you wanted, but this year, guys are going to get a note a week out if they're outside those guidelines. There we go. We got uh, another one here. A bunch of live questions pop piling in here. Appreciate all the all the questions here. Uh, Nathan Livingston, uh, on the topic of getting new shooters in a sport, does PRS have any interest in a rimfire league? 
Um, I think so. When it started becoming popular uh, last year, um, or not probably about two, three years ago, you know, I looked at it heavily. Was approached by, it, and my, my assessment is that I have to look at the organization, and I have to look at like what are we capable of doing. Uh, given our size, given the organizational structure. And right now, um, you know, what cedars don't understand is someone has to manage that. There, there's a bill to be paid with that, either in labor, in website infrastructure. Um, and so when I look at other rimfire leagues that are out there, I see the numbers and I see that they're so small. And I see that right now, the way we're structured, that is a potential distraction from the things that we need to do well. Um, so I know that's probably not the, the answer that some guys want to have. Um, and, but that does, and it doesn't mean it's a dead issue. It just means we'll keep an eye on the landscape um, and take a look at it. But right now for 19, I, it's, 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 it's not going to happen for, for 19. And I'd have to look at that and in, in greater detail to make a decision, which we're, we're just trying to put some fires out and, and get, get the thing, get the ship going straight at this point. And, and, and rebuild some relationships and, and, and focus on the regional series and the one day series. Boom, well, there we go. I got a last last few questions here and then I think we can wrap this one up. Uh, what uh, what upcoming matches are you getting for getting ready for now? Uh, any registration days are always crazy since match fill up so quickly. Which ones are coming up? MPA is uh, January fourth, right? Yeah, the registration is yes it is. So I, I think frontline in North Carolina, if they're not full, they have a handful of slots. Core sold out. Um, California um, will, will open shortly. War Rifles in Maryland is, is, is open. Um, Lone Star is getting ready for announcement. We're waiting on their information from them. MPA is going to be popular. That, that's the first, uh, that is going to be the first qualifier in the Southeast. So I expect that one to be extremely popular. And then very close to that is the Rocky Mountain qualifier match in, in Utah. So uh, both the Northwest guys there are going to get um, some, some pressure on those matches. Um, and then uh, we start getting later in the spring. But those registrations are coming up. So half the matches are probably sold out or very close to being sold out. Um, and then we got some other ones that are opening that, that have always been popular in the past. And I, I anticipate those selling out pretty quick as well. Well, Chad Glasscock wants to know, is there going to be a young category? I guess a youth shooter is. category? A category for both um, um, the regional series and the pro series, and that's under 18. And we don't have any plans, though, on, on breaking that down at this point. Okay. So sponsorship is always a hot topic uh, for matches and for individual shooters. It's twofold. So how can shooters give back to the companies that sponsor the matches to allow such big prize tables? I'll be honest, when I came from 3Gun over to PRS, I was shocked at the prize tables. I was like, oh, well, I'm at the bottom. I probably won't get anything. And I've gotten some decent things off the prize table, even finishing mid-pack. I've gotten some good stuff off the table. So how can shooters like I try and email the companies of the product that I pick up off the prize table and maybe one or two others um, is that enough how can shooters give back to those sponsors to keep it well relevant yeah, so I, I think that's a start the problem is Janice you're probably you're probably less than five percent of the shooters that do that um, so we've really been working since Thanksgiving on our sponsorship and guys could see the the, the kind of the presentations that I gave out the sponsorship that are the sponsors if not more so or equally so compared to the shooters are excited for about the prs and want the prs as an organization because it streamlines their efforts to get to the shooters so sponsorship you know coming into it we're a little concerned like okay what, what's going on what's the what's the landscape it's been it's been a phenomenal response um and i've talked to between jewel and myself we've talked to each and every one of them at details you know, how we're changing the sponsorship, how, how we do as far as supporting the PRS um, and then supporting the matches and the different programs we have. Um, but I can tell you, I've had a, some conversations with, with quite a few of them, a sizable amount, and they're questioning their 
their their rate of return um, on how much they invest, which is normal for any business as far as getting the, their product out there, getting their name out there, getting exposed to shooters. Um, so I think an email, you know, saying what Max are coming from, thanking them for doing that, shows them like, hey, that's great. Um, I'm getting a return, but it's got to be more than 5%. It's got to be everybody. So if you don't have the, the common decency, yes, the master directors work incredibly hard. The jewel does it for us. You know, Kane and McGrath have phenomenal prize tables. You know, that, that start spacey shot show works all the way to May and is a full time job for jewel. Um, and the tables represent that. And that's one of the small things that's a draw to the table. And then, you know, we as match directors, they have responsibility in that too. Uh, it's not just solic soliciting the donations for the prize table, but it's honoring the wishes of, of the sponsors if they want something, if if they're if the match directors are capable of doing it. And there's times we say no to, to match directors because it, it'll be too much, or to sponsors because it'll be too much to incorporate in our match. So we'll try to work with them. Um, but shooters got to go out and they got to send that email and they need to say thank you. They have a picture, send them a picture. You know, the flip side of that, Jen, if if guys go to the prize table, um, and some guys do have an entitled attitude and they they pick something that has some value off the prize table and they turn around and, and sell it uh, either online or on Facebook, you know, that next week or something. If you don't think the sponsors notice, like I could tell you right now they do because I've talked to a lot of them about that. Um, now we can't control that. That is up to the shooter. But I'll tell you guys, if you don't need it, if, if you think you're entitled to that to help one shooting, um, to sell your stuff from the, from the prize table, um, th that's a shame. And the, the sponsors are noticing that. It, it would be much better for yourself as a shooter and as a sport if you go up there, either bypass and let that new shooter that might need that gear or grab something off the table and give it to the deserving shooter. At the bottom, a guy had some equipment, maybe that's substandard or, or lacking some equipment. That The mileage you're gonna get out of that for yourself as a shooter, for that sponsor, is so much greater than you taking that and, 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 and trying to sell that. So um, I, I think as a community, it's going to continue to get tougher and tougher. And eventually sponsors are going to start pulling away a little bit or giving less um, because we're not, we're not good stewards and, and showing them the pre appreciation and support they got. So if you're a prize table guy and you like it, and it's a big thing to you, it drives you great. No problem there, but do it responsibly. Do it respectfully and send that email, send that, send that note of thanks, call them up, do something on the way home because you got a long drive anyway. So leave them a yeah. voicemail or something. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Got any live on your end? I got one that I think it can hit other than one that we're pretty good here. We kind of skipped the discount corner uh, portion because there was just a lot of information, a lot of questions here. We wanted to get it all out. Um, Joseph has one here. He says to start a club, what's the minimum distance needed? Uh, it depends. Um, it depends what region you're in. If if you're a region that, that is overcrowded and, and the match directors either collectively or by the regional director has uh, decided to reduce a certain amount of matches by some clubs or other clubs, um, then uh, it might be, you know, we'll want you to have that, you know, thousand yards or so. Um, if, if you're in an area, the Northeast is probably our fastest growing area right now. You're in the Southwest. Um, areas that either just come to geography or just lack of places to shoot, you better call me or send me a note right away. Um, either way, do not sit on the sidelines and and not ask because uh, the chances are 99% of the time it's going to be a yes and we're going to work with you to try to help you out. I mean, we're here to promote and grow the sport. So if there's clubs out there in, in the past year and a half or so, you, you, haven't, you haven't got a response, guys, you're going to get a response within 48 within 40 hours from us. So, uh, and I'll probably end up calling you myself because I like talking to people. I'm a talker more so than I'm a uh, email guy if I can, if I could avoid it. So last question I have actually, which is from my amateur from the gap grind last year. He said, so TSM usually asks a question like, how do you recommend practicing? Uh, so how do you recommend training to defeat the unstoppable George Shannon team? Unfortunately, my pro uh -huh. at the Gap Grind right. chickened out of the epic swimming competition right. for the mini bike at the Gap Grind. How should we practice teamwork for next year's challenge? I really want that awesome Armageddon gear mini bike. <laughs> so we need to 
we need to talk to Tom and see if he'll do the mini bike again, which I'm sure he's game for. But uh, that's just unlike shooting where you could go train and, and I could give you all the tidbits and our training philosophy at K&M. Um, when it comes to that event, to swim across the pond, that there's nothing you can do. That's just, just pure. In fact, our names are permanently engraved on the trophy. So, well, it's been uh, said that you and, and George have never lost a team competition, right? Isn't that what y'all said? We, of we any have, sort? We have, lost, we have never lost any precision. You know, back in the day, a lot of these were team matches. Uh, we've never lost a team match. We never lost anything. Uh, I think we both had heart attacks, but we came out victorious. But yeah, the uh, and that's what's fun. I mean, we talk about the shooting, and that's a big part of it. But, you know, when you got an event like that, and you got a bunch of fat, old, retired guys like us, you know, jumping the pond, swimming across, having a good time. I mean, that that's what makes the sport so awesome. And that's what we need to focus and concentrate on. And and uh, and that's what we are. And, and so, you know, 2019 is going to be awesome. If, if you want to train up and, and try to take a shot at the title for a, the swimming relay race across Gardner Pond at, at the grind, then get, start swimming, get after it. But I, I, I know this, it's, it's going to be an uphill battle. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> You missed it, Anthony. It was it was epic. What are you swimming across the pond with gear on, or what? Are you just swimming across the pond and again getting to your? No, we just did re a relay race after uh, day two. And but let me tell day. you, they like smoked everybody. Like <laughs> they were. Well, all see, people forget. Again, everyone, you know, I, I grew up playing. You know, I was an all American in, in college. I, I grew up playing water sports, and then you know, George was a California boy too. We both grew up in California, so. You know, I think he's where I'm competitive too. So we might be, you know, a few pounds over, a little bit of gray hair, but uh, you know, we can still pull it out for 100 meters if we have to. So now that was a lot of fun. They smoked everybody, Anthony. Get your swimming skills up, boy. That's what you need to do, I guess. All right, all right. I think we're good on this one here. I appreciate all the live questions that really helped the show flow. Uh, I got a couple that we couldn't get to, but it was more comments, more more comments and questions. Uh, so we'll lead this one down to, uh, to shout outs. Jim, we usually start off with you. What do you have? Yep. Shout out to Prime Ammunition. Awesome ammo. So check them out. They've been posting some videos of the TPRC uh, match that they had people at because they were a sponsor of that match. So check out those videos. Pretty cool if you want to see what PRS is about. It kind of shows a match. Uh, Night Force. Optics for awesome glass. Lansing Tactical, if you want a gas gun, check them out. They have great gas guns. Under Industries for um, shooting jerseys, they still have the uh, deal going. It's $199 for two jerseys, a tech shirt, and a jacket. So check them out because that's really a great deal to be able to get all those four items with your sponsors on there. GSL suppressors, one day mine will be out of jail eventually, and then Ryan Hay will think I am civilized again. Is, is um, the government shut down affected comms? Anybody know that? Because they, sure they sure as hell got someone cash in the checks. I, I don't you know. <laughs> They need no. to hurry up. Now, there's still someone cashing the checks really quick, but I'm sure <laughs> there'll be some bullshit with the the time turnarounds. Yeah, we'll hopefully by, like, March, mine will be out, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Shooters of Augusta and Sharpshooters of Augusta, um, awesome shooting ranges here locally to me. Check them out. Uh, and I want to shout out Patriot Cases for great cases for carrying your rifle to matches. And I love the wheels, so I don't have to carry it in the hotel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, shout outs from Shannon, man. What do you got? Uh, nothing, guys. I mean, uh, you know, the the series this year, we talked about that sponsor support, but we got a lot of, you know, Kales, our title sponsor. They helped us out tremendously. Uh, uh, MDT, um, you know, Nine Line and, and Trigger Tech came in really big uh, to support the series, and, and we have many others. Uh, we're going to do a lot better job highlighting those guys this year on the website too but guys get 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 ready i know it's cold out for a lot of you but we're, we're excited about the 2019 season there's some more rules updates one last rule update we got going on we got our registration opening january 15th and the matches start about six weeks later so it's going to be a great season look forward to it be safe train safe train hard um enjoy it and uh you know remember you know get out there compete hard but if you're you're judging your self-worth how you finish at a rifle match. Uh, you know, it's it's a rough way to live. Get out there and have fun. Compete. Be competitive. Be charitable. Be respectful. Uh, you know, give all the glory to God. And let's go have some fun. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, 
have a great PRS 2019 season. Mm, well said. Now, a couple of shout outs on my end here. If you are watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, you see a yellow subscribe button. Hit that every Tuesday. We're trying to do a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset featuring another great guest. Um, definitely thanks to Shannon for taking like two hours of his time here to talk with us about PRS. We appreciate that. Uh, folks over at Tactical Shit, shop at tacticalshit.com. Give them support if you're out shopping around uh, for some gear. Take a look at them. Uh, for your rimfire needs, if you're a rimfire pistol rifle guy, you check out the folks over at Tandem Cross. They have a lot of parts and accessories for your rimfire section. Uh, if you want to email me, the shooter's mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Uh, lastly, here, Terran Tactical Innovations. I'll wrap it up with them. I think they got a year end kind of like New Year sale. You know, I think I saw up to like 30% off. That coupon code's kind of out there right now. So if you're looking for any gear from Terran Tactical Innovations, uh, take a look and uh, save yourself some money from now. Uh, that'll do it. Episode 246 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. And we're out of here. <laughs>